Morning everyone. Uh, real quick, if at any point in the video you hear me mention a tool in Blender that you don't know how to use, then please use this sheet for reference. Oh, it happened again! You checked out skin submissions in the Tower Defense Simulator Discord server, and you saw something that you were just dying to recreate. And that's exactly why I'm making this video. For starters, open a new Blender file with your reference image and your rig. I go over how to make the rig in my old character modeling video, and the reference image can just be anything online that you think looks cool. The purpose of the reference image is to have an actual picture of the thing that you want to recreate. I started off with just a simple pair of gloves on the arms. I think I made a tutorial for these like two videos ago, and I also extruded some brass knuckles on the end of the gloves. After making something generic like a pair of gloves, add a couple of loop cuts around your arm, move around the vertices, and extrude them. Try to match the style of your reference image with these extrusions. This really makes your model look unique and more appealing. After that, I'm going to add some knife cuts to the side of my arm to try to recreate that little metal thing on the side of my reference image. You can spend some extra time on a part like this, because as I said before, recreating the fine details on your reference image is what's going to make your model the most unique. And the more unique it is, the better it'll look. Oh, and what did I tell you? That's looking more gorgeous than an ice cream Costco sample. From here, I just took a couple cylinders, made some extrusions on them, added a couple bevels, and just slapped them on the side of the arms. Never underestimate the power of extruded cylinders. They can make anything look better. To add some extra detail to the arms, I slapped on a couple deformed cubes, and I raised the shoulders up a little bit. For the torso, I started by roughly knifing out the shape of the vest, using the knife tool and the loop cut tool. Then I just kind of experimented with the different areas that I should extrude from, until I got something that I was happy with. From there, I extruded a simple belt around the waist, and then for some dang reason, all the vertices at the back of the belt got completely screwed up, so I spent like a half hour trying to fix them. After that, I modeled this little pocket whatever you want to call it, thing to put around the belt because I thought it looked pretty cool. <laughs> now it's a Roblox character. After that, to add some more detail, I slapped a couple more of these deformed cubes around the chest. And then, of course, I added a couple more extruded cylinders. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. I wanted to keep the legs really simple, so I started by just adding a couple loop cuts around the area, and then I extruded this little boot. From there, it was just loop cut, extrude, merge vertices, move down, loop cut, extrude. And somewhere in that monologue, I actually modeled a leg. But yeah, all you need to know for modeling legs is keep things simple and make a lot of extrusions. <laughs> and use those extruded cylinders! Oh, okay, headpiece. For the headpiece, I just took a circle, extruded it around the head till it filled the whole thing, cut it in half, mirrored it, and then just added some cuts and extrusions to match my reference image. Overall, the headpiece modeling is pretty straightforward. The key is to just match your reference image, not leave any empty space, and use all three dimensions as much as possible. I know that sounds kind of stupid to say in a 3D software, but it can be really easy to ignore the dimension of depth when you're working with a mask. After being satisfied with the form of the front of the mask, I added in some cylinders for the eyes, and then I just tried to fill in as much space as I could. After rounding everything off and making it look neat, I was just about done with the mask. And then for some reason I just thought extruding out the back piece looked good. And finally, after messing around with a couple last vertices, I was done. <laughs> and now we get to color it. I started off by making a couple simple materials. And if you've watched my coloring tutorial, then believe it or not, sitting and separating and coloring objects for 45 minutes is actually more monotonous than it sounds. So to save time, I'm just going to time lapse the whole thing. I already made the model coloring tutorial, so if you guys want to know how I did this, just check that out. And there we go. Also, if you guys didn't see, I stole a backpack off of one of my older models during the coloring process, and I put it on this guy since I thought it looked cool. So for a TDS tower, this would ideally be the max level, and I'm not going to show me modeling the other levels because it's basically the same process as this one. Although one key thing to note is that you can use a lot of subtractive modeling, and that you can just duplicate the max level and take a ton of accessories off of it for the previous levels, but overall it's a pretty similar modeling process. Okay, it's almost midnight, I'm totally cooked, I've got stuff I have to do tomorrow, so uh, yeah, I hope you all learned something, and I'll see you later.